Here I will once again explain why David Benatar's brand of antenatalism is futile, and based on a logical error. Please follow along with your eyes as the text is read, so you can see punctuation, etc. Consciousness is a function of living brains. So we can say, brains do consciousness. So what are you? Everyone calls themselves I, or me. This sensation of self, I, me, is something brains do. A brain was born, and it started doing you, a self. After this self ends, other brains will do other selves. Therefore, this self the one listening this right now, will be followed by another self. When we were kids, most of us asked ourselves the question, what if my mom got pregnant to a different man besides my dad? Who would I be then? So we instinctively knew as children, that if I wasn't born, then some other I would have been born instead. But let's take this thinking a bit further. There are only the experiences consciousnesses that are being done by living brains right now on earth, and wherever else in the universe that brains may be, or perhaps some other organ that also does consciousness, experience. There are no black voids that people come out of in order to come into existence, from somewhere else, and we were not resting in peace, before we existed. There was no silent black void. But, it appears to me that David Benatar imagines a state of non-existence that somehow allows the non-existent person or animal to enjoy a non-experience, or an experience of no experience. But right now, there are only the experiences that there are, the ones being done by living brains wherever brains may be. There are no unborn children, currently in some sort of state of deprivation. Just as I alluded to when I mentioned the common childhood thought of who would I have been if my mother never met my dad, but my dad was someone else? It isn't like you'd be sitting in a black void of nothingness right now. If you hadn't been born, then instead of your experience right now, it'd simply be one of the experiences consciousnesses that is currently occurring right now. One of the experiences that are being done by some other brain. This makes Benatar's antenatalism futile. If you hadn't been born, there would still be experience occurring right now, but it's just being done by other brains. That's all. You. Are. Experience being done by a brain. A brain was born and started doing a. You. A self. I'll attempt to illustrate below. Here's a thought experiment. Imagine there's only one conscious brain in the entire universe. That's the only conscious experience there is. Just that one experience. And it just happens to be you. Now imagine you die. The brain that was doing the consciousness that's listening to this right now died. So there's no brain doing consciousness, experience anywhere. Period. So there's simply no experience occurring anywhere in the universe. Hard to imagine isn't it? That's because there isn't anything to imagine, no. Black void of nothingness, etc. Okay, back to the thought experiment. But then, after you ended, a few years later, or longer, perhaps millions of years later, a completely different and new brain comes to exist somewhere else, maybe in some other galaxy. Out there in the universe. So now that's the only experience consciousness that's occurring. You're, not in a state of deprivation appreciating being spared from this new instance of experience that's being done by this new, one and only brain. Because that would require you to exist. Remember. You, are experience. Just one instance of experience. And every brain does experience. Back to the thought experiment. And now this new, second experience that's being done by this new brain is the only experience there is. You, are no longer being done by that brain that died. The only self, or, I, remember. Everyone is, I, to themselves. Ask everyone you know to refer to themselves, and they might ask you. Who, me. Quote dot dot dot. Followed by, well, I'm. Dot dot dot. Back to the thought experiment. There's only that new living brain and the consciousness experience I, it's doing. You didn't go into that new brain, it's a simple matter of there being another instance of experience after the first experience ended. Another instance of I, after the first I. So the second experience came after the first. So if you died right now, you wouldn't be spared from experience because you, won't be being done caused anymore, but there will be other brains doing experience at that point in time. Which means that experience is unavoidable, because only experience is what's experienced. There cannot be an experience of no experience. So it wouldn't have made any difference whether or not. Your, experience being done by a brain right now, because other. You's, experience, are being done by other brains right now. 
Notes. The phrase, experience of no experience, was used by philosopher Tom Clark in his essay called Death, Nothingness and Subjectivity, which can be found on naturalism.org. Please read this essay, as the idea it puts forth, generic subjective continuity, is what the argument in this video is based on. Also, the comment about wondering who you'd be if your mother was impregnated by someone other than your dad was influenced by a talk Alan Watts gave. I believe the talk is called Everyone is I. Thank you for your time.